What up, everybody? All right, so if you know me, if you've followed along on the channel, if you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, you know I'm an absolute lunatic when it comes to Sonos versus HomePods. The struggle with those two in 2022 was the most ridiculous thing I've ever been a part of. Then Apple came out with the new HomePods. That's what I was waiting for. Thought maybe I'd put Sonos to bed, out of my life. In that video, I said maybe I thought that that was over. But then, of course, right after that, Sonos comes out with two new speakers, and you knew I was going to get dragged back in, and that's exactly what happened. They came out, I bought them, they're back in my life. So I've decided, if you can't beat them, join them. I'm going to do both. Instead of switching back and forth, I'm going to do both. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about those new Sonos speakers. We're talking about them versus the home pods. Let's get to it. Sweet fancy Moses, look who's back. What the heck is going on, everybody? It's George Langevier with Silver Hammer Surveillance. Here on the channel, we talk smart home tech, we talk home security, and unfortunately in October 2022, yours truly had to go off and get colon cancer. So I've been sharing that journey and spreading that awareness. Very important to me, but we're gonna try to get back to a little bit of normalcy on the tech side and the security side, and then some health updates at the end of each video, if it's warranted because I know so many of you care about me and have been asking questions and are so supportive. And I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea. And so it's very important to me that I still spread that awareness as well. But we're gonna do that at the end of each video and do it with chapters. That way you have options. If you're here for the tech, great. Here for security, great. You want the health updates, just stay till the end or skip around, whatever you wanna do. All right, so that takes us to today. We are talking about smart home tech and we're talking about sound, music, one of my favorite things, I am a music freak. Speaking of cancer, I don't know where I'd be without music. I've got it playing all the time. I'm working from home now. I pretty much got music playing every waking moment I'm here. And we're gonna talk about how I'm doing that in every room of this condo. And I'm doing that with Sonos and HomePods. And if you have followed me with Instagram and Facebook and here on the channel, you know I have been a complete lunatic when it comes to the battle between Sonos and HomePods. 2022, the most ridiculous tech year of my life, how much money I spent switching back and forth. I was waiting for the HomePod 2, it came out. And in that video, I did a video on it, go back and check that out. I thought Sonos was behind me in the rear view mirror. And then right after that, what did Sonos do? They came out with the Era 300 and the Era 100 and sucked me back in. I knew full well I was gonna buy those speakers. I don't know what I was thinking when I said they were done. But now I've decided if you can't beat them, join them. I'm gonna do both. So in this video, we're gonna unbox the Aero 300 and the Aero 100. I'm gonna talk about all the specs. And then we're gonna take you on a tour of our setup. Not a complete smart home tour, but a tour of my Sonos HomePod setup. And along the way, I'm gonna tell you who each speaker is for, what I think about the Sonos Aero 300 and 100, and then also compare them to the HomePod 2. And we're gonna talk about all of that. And so let's get started with the unboxing and then we'll do the tour. All right, let's unbox and let's start with the Aero 100. You've got that eco-friendly box, which Sonos is famous for, a not return friendly box for the guy that likes to put it on Facebook Marketplace or return it because I'm always switching back and forth. Anyway, um, you got the wrapping, uh, that little bag that Sonos always puts on their products. You have the documentation on the top of the box, by the way. You got that cool cylinder design power port, line in, you got the Bluetooth button, and you've got the physical microphone button, then you got those capacitive touch buttons for volume, pause, forward, back, and etc. Then on the bottom, you got the good old power cord, and that's it. So let's move on to the Era 300, which again has got that eco-friendly box. This time they've got that locking mechanism on the box, which Sonos puts on there, nice little touch, I love that. So this one is return friendly, by the way. Um, then you've got that little bag again, and the nice little Sonos seal, and the very uniquely designed Era 300. Then you've got the capacitive touch buttons on the top, you've got the line in, you've got the Bluetooth button, and you've got the physical microphone button, and then that's it. And then you can see just a very, very unique design. You got the welcome uh, documentation and the power cord, and that's it. That is the unboxing of the Aero 100 and Aero 300. Okay, before we tour, let's talk some specs. We'll start with the Aero 100. This is $249. It was designed to replace the Sonos One and the Sonos One SL. 
It can be used as a single speaker in a stereo pair or as surrounds for a complete surround sound with Sonos using the arc, beam, sub, etc. All right, it's got three Class D amplifiers, one mid-size woofer, two angled tweeters, far field microphone array, and adjustable EQ. The cool thing about this one compared to the Sonos One is the Sonos One was a mono speaker. This actually has stereo in one speaker. So when you listen to just one of these, you got stereo sound, whereas before you did not. And then you put it in a stereo pair and it sounds even better, but just as a solo. You got stereo sound, which is awesome. It's a little bit taller, um, but thinner than the Sonos One, but similar in design, just more of a cylinder. Capacitive volume control. So you got capacitive touch here, uh, fast forward, you know, skip a track, pause, and then the slider for volume. You got all your music services, and this is an advantage Sonos has over HomePod. Pretty much every music service you can think of, including Spotify, is included in the Sonos app, and you just got a wide variety. Whereas with like Siri on the HomePod, you're missing Spotify. You can use AirPlay 2 to use Spotify, but it's not native. Sonos pretty much has everything native, so that's awesome. And you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So the Sonos One was just a Wi-Fi speaker. This adds Bluetooth capability. So you can actually use this as a Bluetooth speaker on its own, which is awesome. Good addition, Sonos. All right, line in for a turntable or computer, which is fantastic. You got that capability here, which you didn't have before. Easy setup in the Sonos app. If you've used Sonos before, this is the same thing. One big difference is the True Play, and this is an awesome addition. TruePlay is a room sensing technology that Sonos does better than anybody else. HomePod does a great job with the computational audio and sensing a room, but this TruePlay is amazing. And it was a little ridiculous before because you had to go around your room and wave your phone and it made a sound like you were under a nuclear attack. And here, you know, in a condo with neighbors and in our apartments, it always sounded weird. I think our neighbors probably thought we were crazy. Um, but anyway, this has the normal true play and now it has a new advanced true play which is much quicker and you don't have to do anything it just senses the room on its own which is fantastic and you can do that within the sonos app and again that's very easy to set up all right for voice assistance this time you have the sonos voice assistant and you have alexa no google assistant this time which is disappointing but that's a google thing not a sonos thing google changed their requirements as far as devices that can use the assistant and sonos and google are not in agreement at the moment but hopefully that'll change. Now it does have a physical microphone button on the back, so you can turn that microphone on and off. That's also where the Bluetooth uh, button is. But yeah, um, so that's great. You have control over the, the voice assistant with a physical button, and you can also turn that off in the app or just not use it at all. And then you've got some cool accessories offered in Sonos.com. They've got stands, wall mounts for this. Um, Stannis, a very popular brand for stands. They've always worked well with Sonos. They've already got some stands I saw. I haven't seen any wall mounts from them. They're a little cheaper than the Sonos, no offense Sonos, but Sonos um, accessories from Sonos.com are very well made. And another thing is if you shop on Sonos.com and you buy these in stereo pairs, you get a discount. I know on the Aero 100, you save 30 bucks. All right, so let's move on to the Aero 300. Okay, so this bad boy is $449. It has six Class D amplifiers two woofers, which are force canceling, four tweeters, one is for forward firing, two side firing, and one upwards for the Dolby Atmos. And that's what this bad boy right here adds is the spatial audio. Now, up until now, you could not get spatial audio in a Sonos speaker unless you had the beam and the Sonos arcs of both sound bars. So as far as their single speakers go, that is the big deal here with the Era 300 is you've got that Dolby Atmos. And you can see in the design, it's kind of designed a little uniquely because of that. But I'm telling you right now, it sounds fantastic. And we're gonna talk about this more in the tour, but this does Dolby Atmos and spatial audio better than the HomePod, in my opinion. And if you put two of these together, because you can stereo pair these, you can use it as a single, or you can use them as surrounds. Um, and in my tour, I talk about this. I actually started with an arc and a sub in my living room and had these as surrounds. But in this particular condo, it was too much for the room. Um, this room we're in right now is supposed to be the living room for a normal person because, but I changed it to a YouTube studio. So the room we use as a living room is very small and this was just too much, both aesthetically and size wise, it was just in our way. So I've actually got Aero 100s coming as my surrounds, but 
if you use these as surrounds, when, when I tested it, it was freaking amazing. Um, and then even as just a stereo pair, these definitely sound better than a stereo paired HomePod set. Um, the spatial audio is just better, um, but all around, this is just better, but it should be for $449, whereas a HomePod's only $300. But just know the spatial audio is the big addition here and it sounds fantastic. All right, so this also has far field microphone array and adjustable EQ, just like the Aero 100. Um, it has that true play tuning that I was talking about, both the advanced and the simple setup. That simple setup is so cool. And to me, it sounds just as good as the advanced true play. Now the design for this is basically best suited probably against a wall. Um, whereas a home pod is completely, you know, a cylinder um, designed maybe best to be in the middle of a room. You could put it against the wall too, but it's probably best in the middle of a room because you got that full circle. Um, this is, you know, this is the front, this is the back, and it's really best against a wall. But, you know, you could put it in the middle of a room, especially if you had it for surround sounds on stands behind your couch, it'd be fine. But it's got a cool design against the wall. All right, as far as the voice assistant, again, you have Sonos Assistant and Alexa, no Google Assistant. Um, and then you can use Siri using AirPlay 2, not built in, but AirPlay 2 is still great. Um, you know, Sonos was designed to be very Apple friendly from the beginning. Uh, before Apple had their own speakers, Sonos was very prominent on the Apple store. Um, that's how I got into it in the first place. Um, they don't quite have that relationship anymore, but they do still have the special relationship with AirPlay 2. So, you know, it's sort of an Apple speaker and that's how I can still live with this bad boy. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, it's fantastic that this can be a Bluetooth speaker. Like I said, with the Aero 100, same thing. You've got a Bluetooth button on the back. You've got the physical microphone for the voice assistant. You have a line in, which is USB-C, and that's so cool. So you can use it with a computer, you can use it with a turntable. And uh, then you do have the um, all the different music services, you know, Spotify, um, Tidal, Apple Music, YouTube Music, everything you can possibly think of is in the Sonos app. And anything you can use with AirPlay 2, including Spotify, you can use with this. Um, but all the different music services, if you've used Sonos before, you know they're very friendly with pretty much everyone. Um, so that's cool. And then you've got the capacitive touch control for the volume slider. You got to play, skip forward, back, and then um, the microphone uh, icon there. All right, so those are the specs. Let's tour. All right, so I know this is about the era 300 and era 100, but it's about Sonos in general. So I'm just gonna show you everything I got, Sonos and HomePods. We're gonna start in the garage, the least attractive place in the condo. I got the Sonos Move. And one of the reasons I keep going back to Sonos is because they have portable speakers. And I just love that. They got this in the Sonos Roam. The Sonos Roam's a little guy, but I love the Move because of the way it sounds. And then I've got a brilliant smart switch here. And we're gonna talk about why that's important to me in Sonos in a moment, but another reason I go back to Sonos is right here on this smart switch. But what I love about the portability that I can't do with a HomePod unless I get a third party little charger or something is I can just take the speaker and when we're hanging out on our patio here, we can just go out here and I just got this little Sonos hook, put that on there. This is completely weatherproof. We can hang out on these chairs, listen to background music or while I'm working here, I can sit out here with my laptop and rock out if I want to. So I love the portability of the Sonos Move and just Sonos in general. HomePods don't have that option. All right, when we're in here in my office, this is our first example of the Aero 300. Now I've got the Aero 300 here and a HomePod here. And this is where I can start to tell you the difference. Now, spatial audio, you know, we had mono, then we had stereo, now we have spatial audio, which just fills the room with all sorts of cool sound up and all around you. It's just like virtual surround sound. Now the HomePod has it and the Aero 300 has it. I will tell you of these two, I think the Aero 300 does better for spatial audio. Don't get me wrong, that HomePod sounds amazing and also has great spatial audio, but I gotta give the slight edge to the Aero 300. Now when we're talking prices, you know, this is $449, that's $300. So I will say for $300 and being cheaper, that's probably the way to go. But if you're a real audiophile and you want that, the better sound, the Aero 300 is the way to go. So it fills this room beautifully. It fills the foyer 
Um, heck, I really wouldn't even need the move out there if I really cranked this up. But of the two, I give the slight edge to the Era 300, but again, more expensive. So, but I love the spatial audio and uh, it's, it's fantastic on both of them. All right, let's go upstairs. Okay, on our main level here, this is where I want to talk to Brilliant. Now, I talked about Brilliant in my last video with the doorbells they did. Um, but if you look at this and you go to the music option, this is one of the reasons I keep going back. Because you have complete control of Sonos. You can select you know, your stations, you can group your speakers. I just love that. And when it's playing music, it actually shows a little you know, wallpaper here with, with your music and your song playing. You can pause, you can stop. But I just love that about Brilliant. And if I'm spending all this money on Brilliant, I want to use it to its full capabilities. So that's one of the reasons I kept going back to Sonos, um, because I want to get this the most bang for my buck out of that little bad boy right there. I got another Brilliant right there. This is where I sit and watch TV. This is my command center. I've got Sonos pulled up right now, but I could also control it from there. You know, you can control Apple Music from here too. And by the way, again, these are all AirPlay 2 speakers. And if you think about it, it, for those of you that are huge Apple lovers, when Sonos first kind of got its momentum, it had a huge place in the Apple store. This was before HomePods. So this was kind of very Sonos or very Apple friendly from the get go. And so that's one of the mental things that I try to remember when I've got that mental block between brands. They were Apple friendly all along. Um, so all of them are AirPlay 2 speakers. So you can control them from your phone, your tablet, your Mac, whatever. All right, so moving on to the living room, I went back to the Arc. I've got the sub there. Now, I will tell you that I started um, a couple weeks ago when these came out. I started with the Era 300s as surrounds on this wall, on these walls here. The problem with this particular condo is since I used the, what was the living room for a normal person as my YouTube studio, this room is very small and those speakers just overpowered us sitting in here. So I actually have some Era 100s coming as surrounds. They didn't make it in time for this video, unfortunately, but they're gonna go right here behind us. But yeah, I've got the, the sub and the arc and the Sonos just sounds better than the HomePods. You know, I had the stereo pair HomePods in here for that HomePod video. Don't get me wrong, they sound great. And with the new Dolby Atmos and, the, um, and their spatial audio and the computational audio they have, they sounded great but they just don't have the complete surround sound effect. Now, again, I don't have surround speakers right now, but when I did, you just get that immersive audio from behind you and everything. HomePods can't do that. Hopefully someday Apple will come out with a more sur complete surround sound friendly HomePod setup. But, so I went back to the Arc and the Sub. At one point I had two subs. I'm not gonna go that crazy in here. I do have a neighbor on the other side of that wall. Um, another thing I wanna talk about that you can't do with HomePods are Pico remotes. This is a little Pico remote. I can control the volume, skip ahead. You know, I've got that right next to where Teresa sits since I've got the Brilliant on my side. Um, this is a wall mounted one, but you can take that out and make it portable. I actually had one down in my office I didn't show you. I've got one up in my bathroom, but I love those little Pico remotes from Lutron and you can use those to control your Sonos as well. Again, can't do that with HomePods. All right, then in the kitchen, I do have a HomePod here. I know it's overkill. I did have a HomePod over there in the living room, by the way. Um, so this is more for timers and everything. Um, but if we do use HomePods for music, we got it in both spots. Again, I know it's probably overkill, but I'm all about overkill. Then I got the iPad mini. I had iPad Airs in here. I just kind of like this iPad mini, the size of it to control my smart home. So I've got Sonos pulled up on it right now, but of course I can do anything, you know, iPad wise there. And, um, just love to have a little touch to screen uh, display of some sort until Apple comes out with a smart display, which is hopefully coming next year, hopefully. And then on this little TV, might be overkill, but I got the Sonos Beam. This is a second generation with Dolby Atmos. I don't really need that on a little kitchen TV, but um, I don't need a lot of things and I do it anyway. So what the hell? Um, anyway, nice little uh, Sonos wall mount. Um, and it matched perfectly with the TV. It just fit very well. Um, so that's the audio we use on that little TV. All right, moving on to my studio. A nice close up of my beautiful face. Actually, before we do that, in this bathroom. This is where I have the Era 100. Now, 
as far as what these are for or who these are for, um, the Era 100. There's that new speaker. Now for me, this is a replacement of the Sonos One. I think that is a great surround sound speaker, you know, for the backs, the back speakers. And I think it's great for a room like a bathroom or a smaller room and perfect for surround sounds, you know, in my office and in this room, that's a little bit larger. This is where I have my second era 300. So I've got a little more uh, bang for my buck in here, you know, a little more bounce, a little more uh, bass and everything else. And as far as that goes, trebles, mids, highs, lows, everything on these sound fantastic, but it does too on the home pod. And again, just like I said, downstairs, I give a little bit of the nod, the spatial audio on the era um, 300. And what's great now is on Apple music with the latest Sonos update, you can all that spatial audio music. Cause I'm a, an Apple music guy um, now plays through Sonos. Um, again, I have another brilliant smart display here so I can control my entire smart home from that bad boy. But again, I use it a lot for Sonos and there's my home pod in the studio. And we do have some studio updates. Um, we've got a couple new TVs. And then uh, just to talk about this in a second, this doesn't have to do with HomePods or um, Sonos, but if you look at my tattoo here, this is from a speech that Steve Jobs did, um, the crazy ones. And uh, I found this nice little addition. So I thought it'd be cool to have what inspired my arm. And actually that speech inspired me to start Silverhammer and really my whole journey that got us here. So. Anyway, it's cool to have that as part of the studio. I shared that on Instagram and Facebook. Follow us there because you get a little more insight into George and Silverhammer on the socials. But anyway, all right, so that's it. We're going to move upstairs. Okay, so when you come upstairs, this is Teresa's wing on this side. For those of you that have watched our other tours, you know I just can't wrap my brain around people that share a bathroom. So this is Teresa's bathroom. It's just got a HomePod in it. Um, I don't need to show you that because you know what a HomePod looks like. This is Teresa's closet. Um, she always got the shaft in her past places. So now she's got an entire bedroom as a closet, but she's got a home pot in there. You can see that Teresa doesn't have the same mental block as me. So she doesn't have to have Sonos in her life. Um, she can just stick with home pods. And then this is Teresa's office. And she also has a home pod in here. Um, so I am rocking eight home pods in here. I went up to 10. It didn't work out so well. You know, I've done the videos on how many are too many. This is where I want to tell you another major reason that I've got Sonos back in here and it's whole home audio. I'm going to show you a video here. We'll pause for a second. Play this everywhere. One sec. Still on it. Sorry, George, I couldn't play that on the speaker you requested. And this is exactly why I switched back to Sonos. Okay, so in that video, you can see that Siri, I don't care what software update you're on, you start to get as many as I have, it just doesn't work. Now, in our first video, it was working great. I don't know what happened, we've gone backwards, but I'm getting a lot of errors and it's really with whole home audio. Now, the reason I'm keeping the home pods is number one, it's great if you just wanna hear one speaker but it's here for, to control Apple Home or Apple Home Kit and Siri requests because you can't do that on a Sonos speaker. Unfortunately, Siri's not built in there. Now, we didn't talk about this, but Sonos does have the built-in Sonos Assistant, which is great as a DJ and everything music, but it doesn't do any requests like Siri does. So that is an advantage to the HomePod, and that's the main reason they're still in here for me, is to control Apple Home and Siri requests. But, um, you know, whole home audio is a problem on Apple HomePods. And for me, it's a huge deal. There's so many people on YouTube that ask me why eight? Well, why does anybody have whole home audio? You, you easily, you, you have any rooms in your house, you're going to get up to that amount very quickly. So I think that's an interesting question because if you want songs in every room, you're going to go to eight like that. I don't care where you live. Um, so anyway, whole home audio, is a major advantage to Sonos because they just do it flawlessly. Um, you can see how many I have in here within this tour and they just work perfectly. Whereas the HomePods, it's a crapshoot. 
you know, you just do a couple of them, you know, like if I do it in the bathroom and the, the bedroom, fine. But if I try to add all of them, or if I say the word everywhere, it's about 40, 60 and 40% being it works, 60% it doesn't on the home pods. And I can't deal with that. So Apple, you got to fix it. Um, and that's with eight. Again, I had 10 and almost everything stopped working, no matter what I was doing. Regular Siri requests or whatever it is. With eight, I'm good on Siri requests, but I'm not good on whole home audio. I have another brilliant display here. And then in the uh, bedroom here, I was going to do surround here, but basically I only watch TV in here before I go to bed. I have to fall asleep to watching TV. And most of the time I actually listen to my AirPods Max so that I don't bother Teresa. So I'm, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in here. I've got my exercise bike in here. Um, so I do still listen to music in here. And once in a while I use this for the TV, but I got the Sonos Beam second generation here. Again, the one with Dolby Atmos. And then I got the HomePod right underneath it. So TV, music, Sonos, Siri requests, HomePod, once in a while music on just the HomePods. But again, with AirPlay 2, I can actually combine all of these. Um, and again, if I try that, the home pods are what caused me the problems. I can get the Sonos to all play and I can get a whole couple home pods to play, but I can never get all eight and all of the Sonos to play, even with AirPlay 2. So it's, it's an Apple thing. And, and that's, again, that's why I keep going back to Sonos. <clears throat> and then in my bathroom, I've got a home pod and a Sonos Move. And again, this might be overkill, but the reason I have the Sonos Move here and we're going to pause for a second when I go upstairs because we're going to, I'm going to show you what I use this for. And again, I've got one of these downstairs, but I'm lazy. I just don't like to go up three flights of stairs to get a portable speaker. But we're going to go up to the rooftop. All right, so this is technically our fourth floor, the rooftop. And this summer, we're going to spend all our time out here in the spring for that matter. Um, but yeah, I just have this upstairs. You know, it's, it's a pain in the butt to go down to the garage and get that one downstairs. So I've got it a little closer. And we just mount that there, hang out up here, listen to music. I work up here. Like I said, I'm working from home right now uh, with the cancer battle. And I just hang out up here, listen to music with my laptop. And uh, I'm so nice, glad that it's getting nice out and that I can do that. Um, beautiful view, tranquil up here. I bought a, a TV, you saw it in the studio. It's the one on the stand. We actually bring that stand up here and watch TV up here. Last year we had a projector and a screen that, that went over here, but I found it flapped too much in the wind. So this, this year we're gonna do it with a TV and I made it portable. I bought a nice light LG that I could carry up here anytime I want. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the tour in the nutshell. The one thing I did wanna mention is the Era 100, you know, talking about comparisons. So I give the nod to the Era 300 on spatial audio compared to the HomePod. But obviously the HomePod's gonna sound much better than the Aero 100. Don't get me wrong, the Aero 100 is still a great speaker, but it's more for those smaller rooms, in my opinion, like a bathroom, or to use for surround sound speakers with the Arc or a Beam. Um, so I just think, you know, so the HomePod's right in the middle, but for general sound, I give the slight nod to the Aero 300, and I should because of the price difference. Again, the Aero 100 is 249, Aero 300's 449, the HomePod's $299. So they're about in line price-wise. I suppose for value, if you're just doing one speaker, the HomePod's where it's at. But if you're trying to get the immersive sound using three Era 300, or excuse me, two Era 300s as surround, um, and I would do that down there if it wasn't so overpowering for our room. I mean, that's the way to go because then you have the complete spatial audio experience in all your speakers because the Era 100 does not have the spatial audio like the 300 does. So. But we're gonna get those 100s in here. They're gonna sound great for that little room. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, Aero 100 in a little room, HomePod, just for general Siri requests, and, and great for music as well, if you're just listening to one, but don't try it with too many in multi-room audio. It's just gonna cause you problems. That's where Sonos knocks it out of the park. All right, so anyway, that's our tour. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, this was just a sound tour, if you will. We've done two smart home tours here. Let me know in the comments if you're ready for an updated smart home tour because this place is always evolving. I don't want to oversaturate you with tours, um, but if you want it, I'll listen. Um, so let me know. All right, let's wrap it up. Thanks for joining us on that tour. And hey, thanks for joining me on my, my journey of insanity of Sonos versus HomePods, 2022 and 2023. 
crazy tech years for me. It's that mental block of sticking with a brand. I feel so loyal that I just, I can't stray and it, it drives me nuts. But maybe I'm turning a new leaf. Maybe you're gonna start joining me on a journey of peace and tranquility. Maybe it's cancer, I don't know what it is, but the new George is just gonna enjoy everything. Heck, if you watch our videos, you know I'm an Adidas guy. Almost in every video I'm, I'm wearing Adidas. Well, guess who just bought some Nike stuff today? I don't know what's going on, but hey, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a wonderful thing. Maybe I'm just gonna live life and enjoy it all. But I wanna thank you so much, not only for joining me on those journeys, but this YouTube journey in general. It's been a crazy one, you know, from tech to home security and all of a sudden cancer. Our subscribers are the best subscribers in the world, caring, patient, wonderful human beings. I thank you so much for sticking with me. And for those of you that are new here, welcome. Please come back for more. I promise you, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to kick cancer's ass and that's just all there is to it. So come back for more, like our video, subscribe to our channel. I'm so thankful you're all here. And hey, till the next one, peace and love.